Hi everybody, welcome back to Skidmore's Giving Day. Skid, um, Skidmore's Summer Faculty Research Program provides students with a unique opportunity to work with faculty on original research and disciplines ranging from biology to management and business, including English, physics, dance, and economics. The program offers students the chance to spend five, eight, or ten weeks in the lab um, <clears throat> immersed in research to gain hands-on experience with a current faculty member. Many research projects are funded by donors. This past summer, 74 students participated in the program. And here with us today, I have Assistant Professor of Chemistry, Juan Nevea. Welcome. And could you share with us who you brought with us? Yes, I have two of my research students, Chris and Deborah. They both have been working in my lab almost two years. Mm -hmm. Well, welcome Chris and Deborah. It's great to have all of you here. Why don't we start and if you could just share with us what's the title of your collaborative research project and if you can briefly describe what it is. Well, I usually have many, so uh, mm -hmm. it, uh, what I can give is it's just a broad and general title, uh, probably uh, uh, complex interfaces in the atmosphere and their impact in climate and, and uh, chemistry. Okay. And so, and why is that um, can you tell us a little bit more about what that is? Yes, so um, what having the atmosphere, usually when we look at it, we tend to think about gas phase and everything is, is air and uh, what we usually ignore and have been, it, it was ignored for quite some time, was um, liquids and solids. And in fact, we do have plenty of liquids and solids. Clouds are formed from a seed that is usually a solid particle. It can be ice or it can be sand or, or uh, aerosols that are lifted from soil. Uh, so what we want to understand is what is the uh, relation between these solid particles and the gases around them when it comes to climate and uh, and the environment. And, and the reason is we, we have a fairly good understanding of what greenhouse gases do in the atmosphere, what is the, the, the impact in climate, uh, but when it comes to particles, these are the Gordian knots of, of climate change. We don't really have a good scientific understanding of what they do. Uh, so any anything like cloud and how they form is still uh, very much a, a question, an open question. And uh, particles that are very common in the atmosphere, and I'm referring to sand particles that travel from Gobi Desert to the United States or Sahara Desert to South America, uh, these, these are global events and um, the, the interaction of these particles with gases and liquids are also an open question. So what we want to do is simulate these environments and, and have a better understanding of what their uh, impact is in climate. Wow. Can you tell me how long you've um, been working on this research? It's been uh, about 10 years, specifically when it comes to, wow. to these interactions of, of surfaces and particles with the atmosphere. Um, before that was mostly very fundamental questions on, on forces and, and photochemistry, but now I'm applying all that to, uh, to climate. Yeah. And so over the course of the 10 years, how many students do you think have been working with you on this? Uh, well over 30 students. Wow. Yeah. And how many, how many today? Today in my research group, uh, we are about nine. nine. That's great. So um, why is this research important to you? Why are you passionate about it? because it gives me the chance to still ask very fundamental questions about chemistry, about physics, that have an immediate impact, that have a, a meaningful result, that can tell me something about the environment, something about nature that no one knew before. And, and this is still very fundamental questions that lead to something that is, is out there and it is visible right away. Mm -hmm. So could you both tell me um, how you became involved with this research? Sure. Uh, so two years ago during, I think it was, end of, it was around this time, right? There was, we had our, the chemistry department had our very first research extravaganza. Um, so it was a time for students who were interested in research to sort of go around the department, um, be with faculty members and see um, if they would like to participate like in doing collaborative research with them. Um, so. Uh, Juan was one of the people that I was interested in doing research with. Uh, and I sort of came in and I talked to him about it and got a visit. Um, I got a tour of his lab, which was really cool. And it was, um, yeah, so it was really interesting because um, I 
didn't expect myself to sort of be in the environmental chemistry atmosphere chemistry lab, but um, I mean, it's been a really good experience for me so far. So it's that's sort of how I got into it. Um, yeah, so I was present at the same um, research extravaganza that the chemistry department had put on, but I had already known Juan from taking general chemistry with him that semester. So I'd already known him, met with him some, um, some, and then when I saw him present his research to all the students at the um, research extravaganza, met with him later, talked about the research he had mentioned. Um, so he had mentioned that he was also, as an undergraduate, uh, chemistry and math double major, <clears throat> which is what I'm doing currently. So it really appealed to me for all my interests. Um, so I talked with Juan and some of his research students that he had had before and um, ended up deciding that that was the best fit for me. Getting involved. So for students who want to get involved, what's the process for, to participate yes. in a collaborative research? So most, um, most chemistry professors are open to taking on students if they show a real interest in what they're doing. Um, so the extravaganza was a good way to see all of the chemistry research professors present their works, give a little elevator talk of about two minutes or so. Um, but for any student that's really interested, they have to talk to the professors. And so do you think that working collaboratively with faculty and with other students is, a, is unique and is that important for you and in, in what you're doing here at Skidmore? Yeah, definitely. Um, I've, I have a lot of other science majors outside of Skidmore um, who are sort of the same majors as we are here. Um, but and I've talked to them about like all the research I'm doing and I've asked them about what kind of research they're doing and they don't really get the same opportunities as we do here, um, given that Skidmore is such a small liberal arts college and the chemistry department makes it really um, easy and accessible for students who are interested in research to actually participate in research. Um, we really get a lot of great opportunities um, in terms of like we get to sort of develop experimental protocol and we get to actually run experiments, work with all these different types of instrumentation that mostly the grad students would be able to work with. Um, and we're given a certain leadership role within our lab as we sort of progress um, in the group. And so it would, it's definitely a unique opportunity outside of Skidmore, I would say. Yeah. It's very important for students to be able to have that experience in the lab, especially when you're going to be pursuing higher education, hopefully grad school and beyond um, for us. Um, which, yeah, so a lot of und other undergraduate um, universities don't have if they have grad students taking up the research with the professors. Mm -hmm. But the Skidmore College, it's small. The chemistry department is a tight-knit group and all the professors really um, are willing to help um, the undergraduate students perform research. And have you ever had an opportunity to present your research, whether it be on campus or elsewhere at a conference? Or Yeah, so this past summer when I was here with Juan um, doing research, um, we traveled to Bucknell one weekend, Bucknell University in Pennsylvania, um, one weekend to present at the Mercury Consortium, which is a consortium of computational chemistry um, professors, maybe about 20 of them across the country. Um, so I was able to present my research in a, or give an abstract of my research in an auditorium with about 75 other students, correct, and all their faculty um, and some grad professors that had come that are part of the consortium as well. Um, and then do a poster presentation of the research that I was working on over the summer. Um, yeah, it was a really good opportunity for me not only to, so doing the research is one step, one half of the battle, but mm -hmm. presenting it, making other people understand it, get interested in it, mm -hmm. is another whole part. So it was a good, good learning experience for me. Very fun. <laughs> Have you ever done um, <coughs> so I presentation? Stayed, so I stayed on campus about two summers ago, and this past March, I was able to um, attend the American Chemical Society conference in San Diego over spring break. Um, so that was a really big conference. I don't, there's a lot of people that go there, right? More than 20. Yeah, more than 20. I'll tell you that. It's, it's the American Chemical Society <laughs> National Meeting. It's, it's, I think, one of the largest scientific, I think it's the largest scientific gathering. Oh, wow. Well, yeah. So, um, yes, yeah, so I had the opportunity to sort of um, present at that conference. Um, and it was being my team, but it was a really good experience because we got to meet other students. Um, who are undergrads. We also got to speak with other chemists and graduate students, and it really helped um, me understand and realize 
how good of an opportunity we have at Skateboard to be able to present at a conference um, like this with all this research. And um, it was also really interesting to get to know about other people's research and stuff like that too. Sounds exciting. Yeah, it's great. So, so Juan, <laughs> for the students that are participating in the summer um, faculty research program, what do you hope the outcome is for them? Like, what do you hope to see over those five, eight, ten weeks that they're working with you? There is a growth in, in critical thinking, for instance. There, uh, chemistry and physics are ways to, to see nature, are ways to see the world, and uh, it's, it's, it's part of the goal, right? So to get students to understand it and, and to be able to communicate that as well. So what Chris and, and Deborah were, were saying a moment ago about going to conferences is one of those goals, right? So uh, the, the experience of doing research directly is fantastic and, and it's, it's a very collaborative uh, endeavor. It's, it's something that we do together and they learn, they master the experiment and uh, at one point the challenge is to make sense of what they they develop there, right? So what, what was initially a completely obscure uh, puzzle now it starts to make sense and the challenge is to, to communicate that to, to the whole scientific community to participate in the, in the conversation. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, what I, I like to see is when, when students start the project as a student, and a few years later, I have conversations with them as, as colleagues, right? So they are helping me grow as well as a, as a scientist. Mm -hmm. And at any given time, how many uh, research projects are you working on with students? Usually have three or four research projects. So all of them are really closely uh, associated, right? So one. One project might be doing some something experimentally, and we look at the same question from the point of view of, of theoretical chemistry, where we do quantum mechanics to understand what uh, the experiment is telling us. So, uh, while I might have maybe four or three uh, different teams, they all work in, in general with the same idea of understanding particles in the environment and the atmosphere. And are you guiding that process in terms of what the projects are, or is it collaborative with the students, or how does that work? At the beginning, it's, I, I guide it, yep. but as the results start to come, uh, we start to see unexpected results. Yep. And once the students have a lot more experience and have read a lot and have been involved in discussions and go to conferences and interact with other scientists, they provide their own uh, their own feedback points and said, well, you know, these this article was suggesting these, maybe that will explain these, these particular phenomena that we were observing in the experiment. So it, it, it takes a little bit of, uh, of, of time to get to that point, but mm -hmm. it, is, it is common to see that once, once the student is comfortable in the lab and comfortable with the ideas, we, they, they start to provide their own feedback. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm saying it's, it's at one point it's a conversation between colleagues and it, it, makes, it makes the research better it makes the faculty member grow professionally and as, as a teacher, but as a scholar as well. So this is this is one of the most exciting moments when it comes to research, and especially once with, with those projects that are obscure and, and we really struggle at the beginning and have that maybe five minutes moment where everything starts to work suddenly. That is just fantastic, and it's fantastic for the faculty member, but it's even more exciting for, for the student. What would you say are some of the benefits for students who participate in this collaborative research? Well, the, the first is, professionally speaking, is, is what they can put in their the resume, right? So it's uh, what Chris was saying, right? So he's, he's, he went to Mercury Consortium. That's a, a, a professional meeting of theoretical and computational chemists. Um, we, uh, as part of that consortium, we have access as well to supercomputers. Uh, so he, he, he learns a little bit more about, about the specific uh, details of, of, uh, of the work, Deborah as well, right? So it goes to a, a national meeting and, and met, I remember you met, uh, especially several faculty members who provide a lot, a lot of feedback. As she's mentioning one, one particularly famous atmospheric <laughs> physical chemist who stopped by and, and took a picture with, with us it's and, and it, was, <laughs> it was exciting. But um, the uh, the bottom line is that they, they also learn. Uh, of course, this is, these are professional presentations, right? So uh, uh, Chris just submitted an, an abstract and, and we will attend and present uh, our work in the next American Chemical Society meeting in, in San Francisco. 
Um, and these are conferences where they go as a scientist. It's, it's, they are likely the only undergrads sometimes in, in a room full of uh, grad students, PhDs, faculty members, scientists, research scientists. And, and that's that's what they're doing. Right? So they are interacting with them one-on-one. Uh, -on -one, and that's that that makes them grow as scientists and, and makes them realize, is, is this for me? And do I like this research? Do I like this environment? What else is out there? But also helps them to disseminate and put in their CV and this is an experience that I've had already. Um, the ultimate goal, of course, is to participate in the broad conversation, that is, to disseminate. This is one way. Uh, Deborah recently became a, a co-author in, um, in a research paper that we published. I think it, was, it came out in July yeah. on, on the effect of uh, aerosols when they dissolve in the atmosphere and, and leach iron. Uh, so the effects of this metal atmosphere and the broader impact and I'm working with Chris on a, another manuscript that we're hoping to submit soon as well so um, articles become a big part of their uh, their uh, resume and of course this experience is always a stepping stone for other questions and other projects that we want to to pursue that's actually a great segue into a question that we received from a viewer. Um, do you plan to continue doing research after you graduate? And if so, will you pick a new topic? Yeah, um, yes, I do plan on going to grad school <laughs> after this. Um, and no, I don't think it'll be much of a new topic. So Juan introduced me into um, quantum mechanical calculations, which has really piqued my interest in chemistry. Um, and beyond that, physical, I mean, yeah, physical chemistry as a broad topic, yes. Okay. Maybe it might not be atmospheric chemistry we want, <laughs> but it'll be okay. <laughs> something very similar, I believe. Um, I also do plan on um, pursuing grad school in the future. Um, in regards to the same topic, I think my project in and of itself is sort of different from Chris's, top, uh, Chris's project and a lot of the other projects that go on in our lab. Um, so mine's a lot more, like the broad scope, I would say, it's like the environmental atmospheric, but I, would, I also use a lot of analytical chemistry using, um, and I get to use a lot of, and um, work with a lot of different types of instruments. So um, I think my topic is broad enough for me to say that, yeah, I think it'd be pretty <laughs> good to stay in it, because I do find it interesting. I do enjoy learning about the different instrumentation and sort of um, working with the different types of analysis, and environmental chemistry is interesting, and I do find it interesting, so I think I do. Yeah, <laughs> I'll say <in> the topic. <laughs> and I would say, how would you say that this experience has impacted you? Um, so it's reconfirmed my belief going into college that I wanted to do chemical research. Um, coming out of high school, you're never, never, never really sure if you know what you want to do or you're just a kid like filled with ideas. Um, but yeah, so now getting the opportunity to be in a lab or with a um, faculty member doing research, um, yeah, has reconfirmed my belief that, uh, yes, that is what I want to do for the rest of my well, life. Because a scientist is that, it's a kid full of ideas. Right? <laughs> I love yeah, it, totally. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, it's def I, di I didn't even picture myself going into research um, after high school. I mean, I knew I was going to go into science, but I didn't really think research was going to be something that I was going to find this interesting. But um, it's definitely like staying here over the summer and conducting research during the school semester really gives you good insight into what a life of like a researcher would be like and um, going to different conferences and all these different experiences that we get really help you understand what like professionally speaking um, what you're really getting yourself into and I think the more I learn about it the more interesting I find it so and I do want to further explore it so it's been a positive <laughs> impact in my life, I would say. Well, that is great. I mean, I think one of the best things here is sort of the hands-on um, element to this and really being able to having the students partner and work side by side um, with faculty on that. So it's been so great to have you all here. We appreciate you stopping by and sharing with us um, about your research and we look forward to watching you guys continue to grow and see what's in the future for you. So thank you. Thank, thank you so, so much. Thank you. All right. We'll be right back.